everybody. How are you guys on this awesome Friday night? Yes, well, um, Joni's here, and I just want to make a, a few quick announcements before we get started. This is so totally informal. As soon as Joni starts talking, you guys are gonna be like, oh yeah, this is, this is easy, this is, this is great. She's gonna give you some ideas of what kind of questions you, you can ask if you um, are not sure, if you didn't put your name in the basket to have a question, to opportunity to possibly have a question asked, um, feel free at any time to get up and do so. Um, also, Joni is totally fine if you want to, when you are called upon and you want to, if you want to record your question and her response to you, you can do that. Um, she even said that if you want to hand her your phone, that might be easier so you can hear her response a little bit better. Um, so uh, she, again, she'll probably tell you that there's no questions that aren't on the table. She's extremely positive. She's totally down to earth. And uh, here's Joni. Hi, Joe. So welcome. Um, this is uh, very exciting for me to be here. Thank you for taking time out on your Friday night to come here. Uh, I want to introduce myself. My name is Joni Isinger, and I'm in Berkeley Heights. I'm originally from Long Island, so evidently like what the Long Island medium is drinking, we've got something going on. Um, I wasn't always like this. This was not my plan. I didn't believe in any of this. I thought that this was bunk, a hoax. Um, I was a trained clinical social worker. I got my degree at Columbia, and I was trained as a gestalt therapist. And it was what you saw before you. It was completely scientific. I didn't believe in ghosts, didn't talk about angels, didn't use the word soul, nothing. So um, my life has been a series of um, a lot of challenging events. I faced my mortality a few times with illnesses, and also uh, bullying and emotional verbal abuse. Um, and along with that, I had very strange allergies and sensitivities. They started off okay. They started off like the normal hay fever and allergic to strawberries and cats. But then it got weird down the road. Um, I was allergic to newsprint, a new finish on clothing, um, new furniture, um, rubber tires, couldn't be in the automotive section of stores. And it got so bad that in 2003, I was anaphylactic. That's where your throat closes up to the chlorine from the town pool. And it was after that that I could only go in buildings where I had a mask on. So if you ever see folks who have masks, they could have asthma, they might have mental illness, they might have uh, COPD, the pulmonary disease. They also might have what's called environmental illness or multiple chemical sensitivities, which I learned was what I had. So in 2003, my sensitivities got so bad, I, um, I was homebound for six months. I couldn't open up windows or doors, couldn't take any medicine, could only eat two foods, and I was gonna die. So the docs thought that I was crazy, my psychiatric social worker community thought that I had lost it, and I was pretty much on my own at that point. So, um, divinely so, uh, I was connected with um, an energy medicine practitioner who came to my home, and he supposedly specialized in MCS, or multiple chemical sensitivities, and he started healing me. He was also healing my son who had this as well. He was born with sensitivities to shampoo and soap and, and things like that. I had to pull him out of preschool because his skin was burning and he was getting sicker. And uh, during this healing time with this energy, energy man, um, he said, did you ever hear of Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, Louise Hay? Have, any, have people heard of these spiritual gurus? I see some nods. So these are like the PBS special folks like uh, Leo Biscaglia from the 70s. He'd be talking about love and hugs. Now, to explain a little further about how it was nowhere, nowhere near any of this spiritual stuff, I lovingly call myself Joni the Jew, and my dad's a Holocaust survivor, and I was very, very hardcore with my liberal reform Judaism, and I wouldn't go near anything that smelled of the PBS special folks and spirituality. So I started reading these spiritual books, and, and it, it seemed really cool to me. I just was awakening. Things were happening, and I'm going, this sounds really cool, and I'm enjoying this, loving all the stories that I'm reading. I'm reading about past lives, and souls, and angels, and pre-birth planning, and color therapy, and healing with sound. And in the meantime, I'm healing. So this energy guy is healing me while I'm, I didn't know I was actually awakening. 
So this man was remote healing me. I don't know how many of you know about remote healing. People do distance healing with Reiki. That might be the most common thing you might hear about. So he, I would be anaphylactic. My throat would close up or I'd have a reaction where I would go down and I wouldn't be able to move or speak for about an hour. So before any of that would happen, right at the beginning, I would call him on the phone. He would just see it from his LED on his phone and he would do an emergency treatment. He'd blast my meridians, those are the energy points that were blocked in my, of my life force in my body, and my throat would open up, I'd be walking around, everything would be fine. So I thought, well, I'm dependent on this guy. If he dies one day, I'm dead the next day, and I'm not a dependency type of a person. So I thought, well, I have to do something. I have to have this bright idea. I have to come up with something where I save my life, where I'm no longer dependent on this man. So my hands would start buzzing. So I don't know how many of you, you don't have to do raise your hands if you want to keep it to yourself, but we are, we're all hardwired the same way. So we all can do this stuff. It's just a matter of whether we've spiritually developed along the way, and if we want to in this lifetime, to do healing. So the palms of my hands would start buzzing. My son had what's called reactive airways, which is like low-level bronchitis, and he had that nebulizer machine. Some of you might have had it when you were a kid. You put the mask on, you put the medicine, the liquid medicine in, and your, your lungs open up. So I put my hands on either side of his chest, and I closed my eyes, and I saw white light, which, what, what's that about? I said, please heal this child of God. Had no idea where that came from, and that wasn't a very Jewish thing to say. And he'd stop coughing. And so I started doing hands-on with him. Then I got this bright idea that I would do distance healing with him. So the sleep-deprived mom, who didn't want to get out of bed and spoon with him and do hands-on healing when he was sick, took my, my arm out from underneath my pillow, and the energy shot out of my palm, went around the corner, and hit him. In his bedroom, he'd stop coughing. So now I'm doing distance healing. Then it went on from there. In the meantime, I'm pretty much healed at that point. My energy medicine guy had me out and I was fun. And uh, people started saying they lost departed ones and pets. And I started getting them. So at that point, I had read about discarnates or ghosts, and I was believing. And Joni knew what to do. So I was moving my Joni spirit aside, and I was allowing these souls to come through. And they were doing what's called, I was doing deep trance channeling where they were taking over my body. It's not like I was out of control. I knew what I was doing. So Joni moved her spirit aside. And they would come through and they'd see through my eyes and I would do kind of like their mannerisms. And if they were a male soul, then I couldn't talk with them. But it, I was kind of doing something that sounded a little more male. And no, I wasn't channeling pets and going roof and meow. So I wasn't doing any of that stuff. That's a little too weird for me. I can't handle that. But I could see the swishing of the tails or the wagging or the panting. I was getting that stuff too. Definitely pulling in these souls. Then I was getting hit with what's called the rapture. So some of you might have been brought up with the religious piece of knowing what the rapture is, which is where when you pass, you're hit with the ultimate joy. And it's just the blessed joy love that you experience when you go home. So these souls would thank me with hitting me with the rapture. So I would just burst out crying hysterically with joy, be on my knees and would feel like my heart was pouring out of my head. Just the best. Started seeing into bodies. Started doing psychic surgery. Started doing automatic writing. I started, uh, I put pen to paper and I started writing. Thought, well, I've read about this, so why not? Like, I just wanted to do everything at that point. It just felt so good and it was so exciting. And by the way, I was only reading the positive stuff. I wasn't reading anything dark. And if any of you are into that dark stuff, it boomerangs and it's not the greatest stuff. If you flip it around and you read the positive, loving stuff, joyous, inspirational stuff, then that's where you grow as a soul and you can help other people. Just sharing. So I put pen to paper and my spirit guy called himself David. And I got the shrinky dig piece because I was a shrink, so it makes sense that I'm going to get a shrink piece. And um, I just loved this, and he, he just kept giving me these pieces. At that point, I'm hooked up with a guy in South Africa who put me on international message board. And he put up my, my messages, and he called it David's Guidance. So people around the world were asking David a question, and I would go in, I, mean, I would go into channel, I would just flip a switch by intention and put pen to paper and start giving them the answer and I'd post it. 
And in the meantime, I was also writing David's guidance pieces. So fast forward, I ended up publishing a book, David's Guidance, that's over there on that table. That's 50 channel pieces. My guide outs himself as Yeshua or Jesus. And no, this is not a Jews for Jesus meeting. This is not a cult meeting. I promise you. I promise you. Um, I outed myself to my rabbi that did not work out very well. He was worried. It just so didn't work out. God bless. Uh, he was worried that I was going to leave the religion. He was not happy with my story that I was doing this. And a month later, I was ordained as a reverend in a spiritual church in name only. Um, again, fast forward, um, I started doing this professionally. Um, I've been doing live call-in shows, two on blog talk radio, one on soul luminous radio. Um, I've, I'm doing restaurant galleries in, um, in at the Long Hill Tavern, which was called the Myersville Inn, that's in Gillette, where they book the back of the restaurant, and then people eat. And for the two and a half hours, I'm doing open readings like this. This is called a psychic gallery where it's open. Um, I've published um, a crystal card deck. I co-created that with two friends, so that's back there too. And I co-authored a book called The Chakra Journey with 14 or 15 other authors. Um, this whole thing was meant to be, I pre-birth planned this. So you're gonna hear, you're gonna hear terms which I'll explain. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try not to go over people's heads. So before we come into a lifetime, we meet with members of our soul group and we plan, are we gonna be a man or a woman? We're ultimately either divine feminine or divine masculine, but we like to play. So we'll decide are we gonna be a man or a woman in this lifetime? Who are our parents gonna be? We kind of see a morphed picture of what we're gonna look like. Oh, do I wanna look like that? Hmm. Where am I gonna be born? What am I gonna, where am I gonna live? Am I gonna have siblings? What's my intellectual level gonna be? My skill set? Am I gonna have a career? Am I gonna marry a kids? And so on. So we put these things down on our path, then we're born, then we get the veil put over us, that's the veil of unknowing, and we don't remember when we're born, it's just psh, game on. And then after we're here, now we have free will choice, and we love it here. So if you're having hard times, you need to remember there are no victims. This is a kick-ass planet, but we know it, and we love it here, and we do this here, on earth for soul growth opportunity. So this isn't about getting the girl, getting the boy, getting the picket fence with the house, getting the dog, getting the vacations and the bling and the technology. This is about soul growth. We want to grow. So when we ultimately go home and pass, they say, how are you? Nice to see you. Welcome back. Good time you had, right? Well, some people yes, some people know some mets and mets. But the point is then the veil comes up we remember everything, we remember our soul plan, and we remember where we are in all of our lifetimes. And then we remember what we were hoping to achieve. And then they ask, well, what did you learn? And then you go through your bucket list. So that's part of this as well. So there are no victims too. Now, I'm not a doom and gloom psychic. If you ever go and get a reading by someone and you get something negative, erase and delete. You don't want to hand over too much money because the higher the, if it gets too much money, it starts being weird. It could be a scam. And if you ever hear anyone say, uh, you need to give me a thousand dollars in order to take that negative energy off of you, leave. Anything where they say, be careful getting in that car when you leave or something bad might happen. Anything that is not inspiring is to be ignored. That is not why we're here to do this. Why do I do these things? I can't help myself. Um, it's not the Joni show, that's not what this is about. Um, if you wanna look up the term, there's a term called light worker. A light worker is someone who brings in divine information to help with inspiring people. I'm a light worker. I got that download one time, I had no idea what it was and I looked it up, looked questionnaire, are you a light worker? And I met, I met the criteria. And I have what's called this sense of urgency. Like I feel like I gotta do this now. I wanna help awaken people. Mm -hmm. So this is why I'm here. And with that being said, that's my spiel. So today, what we can do is, is that y'all have your names in that basket. Someone's gonna pick names and then any question is on the table. It, usually people ask about 
why they're here, that, that's one thing that I can identify is why you're here in this lifetime, why you showed up. Um, if you have any stuck points, I always seem to try, but I can't get past such and such, I can go into that. I'm very good at jumping into past lives in a millisecond. You're not only here in this lifetime, you're also playing in many, many other lifetimes at the same time. We like to say past lives because we like that linear time thing, past, present, future. But if you want to stretch your mind just a little bit, there's here and concurrently, simultaneously, it's all happening now. So you could have ancient Greece going on at the same time as Drew, at the same time as Futurama. So we'll start getting the names. And in terms of questions, it could be about your skill set. What am I going to do when I grow up? Um, how, how many times have I known my, my brother? Why do I fight with my mother? Um, am I going to end up in New Jersey? You know, am I going to settle there? Um, I have issues with spending. It could be about finance. It could be about relationship. It could be about health. No, I'm not a doctor. Please see your healthcare professional business for entertainment purposes only. Um, do people have any questions regarding how this works? If you want me to hold your phone like I'm doing dictation so it's really more up close, so you get a real clear, you know, recording, just give me your phone. I'll hold it like it's gold. Um, and that's it. They can ask about someone they must, might have lost. Yes, I do mediumship, thank you. So I channel departed souls. I don't do it like the Long Island medium. The Long Island medium does it where she goes, oh, I see so-and-so, and they're wearing the blue sweater you bury them in, and this is the secret handshake and all that. I don't do it specifically like that. I will get them, I will get the way that they are at home, the way they are there. So the way that they were here in the life with you might not necessarily be the way that they are there, but I can identify how they're doing, if they have any messages for you, etc. I also do clearing of energy. So if people, I'm known to be a healer, so if people feel that they have negativity in them, negative energy in them, or they've been depressed, anxious, I could go in, I jump into other lifetimes to find out where things might have started, the precipitating events that got them tripped up in another lifetime. We're here, it's a bleed through effect, and it's affecting them here. It's called karma. Karma is a bitch. <laughs> totally, it kicks. And so forgiveness work is the way that you release karma. So I could help the person do the forgiveness work, freeze up the energy. It's like a poof, and it's great. And then it, I can also get information regarding what work you need to do on here. So I know that y'all don't really take notes. You guys are text or phone people. So either do your memory thing, let it sink in, because I think my generation do a lot of this note stuff. So if you want to take notes, I give tons of information. So get your phone ready or have friends remind you of what was said and so on. I recommend recording. I give so much information that you're probably going to be going like this um, just because it's a lot. So um, should we go for yeah, it? Yeah, I'm going for it. No, you're in yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then a mic will be brought over to you so everyone can hear. Oh, and another thing too is, is that I know that some people have private questions. The other side, who, who are they? Ascended masters, archangels, guides, loved ones, um, star beings, elementals, the, the elementals are like the leprechauns, fairies, gnomes, brownies, sprites. Yeah, they do exist. They help tend to the earth. Star beings, no, we are not the only planet, by the way. So there are other star systems that are, are helping us with the awakening. So we have a lot of star, star beings that come in and help too. And consciousnesses and scholars, etc., who come through me only of the highest of Christ-like consciousness. I don't pull from lower energies. You only get the top. So I have Emily Brown. It's Emily. Emily? So there's Emily. <laughs> so you could stay where you're, you could just yeah. sit. The, yeah, you just sit. Start 
it's okay. Um, I, like, I, guess, I guess, like, I'm not sure if I'm following if you can answer why I'm here, that'd be awesome. If my grandma wants to talk to me, I'd be down. <laughs> What's your name? Phyllis. She likes your boots. You can, she wants you to just kind of like relax a little and let things flow. That um, I don't know what the guilt is that you have. I'm not sure what that could be, but you don't have to blame yourself that that's done. You could just bury that. If there's anything that you have regret about, she'll assist you with that and just kind of burying that. There's no need to carry that around. She's calling you honey. None of that. There's none of that she wants for you to do anymore. It's over. Please stop hurting yourself and saying these things to yourself. I don't want to hear it anymore. You're beautiful and you don't need to do that anymore. It's done. So you cry to her. So I don't know if that's in the physical or if that's emotional, if that's energetic. But I see you, she's holding you and, and you're in her arms and she holds you a lot. So you can ask for her, by the way. You can ask for her to give you downloads of advice because she's right there. She has been, but when you do that direct connect and you, you kind of just, just like, you call it grandma or grand or... Ama, hey Ama, just bring them like that. You will probably hear her. Do you hear whispers or? Sometimes I think I do. Yeah, she's talking to you. So if you get in a quiet space, you can hear it more. And if you don't doubt it, then it'll just solidify it more. It'll get stronger. Release the doubt. Know she's right there. Are you afraid you're going to forget things? Do you write lists? Never. <laughs> you never write lists? I mean, I, I like homework, but I always forget. Okay, so then that's, like, she'd like for you, it's either, she'd like for you to either start writing lists to keep track of things because you're kind of going off a little bit. You're kind of moving sideways. She's trying to bring you on track. So the, the more that you focus and ground yourself, and I'll, I'll give you that, have a ground, then um, she can assist you more and then you'll feel better. I don't think you're drinking enough water. That's what a grandmother would do, right? <laughs> she wants you to drink water. Stay hydrated, that'll, that'll um, uplift you and it'll refresh you. This is the way you ground yourself. And another reason why I like doing this is, is that when you hear these readings, there are things that you can get as well that you could do for yourself. So we're a spirit in a body. Mother Earth, or Gaia, is a spirit in a giant rock called Earth. So we love her, and we hang out with her, and we want to kind of hook in with her energy. And so if we're walking on Earth, and we're not really grounded, our spirits aren't hooked in, they're a little bit more wobbly. It doesn't mean bad things are going to happen, but we're just going to be more shaky. We're not really going to be with it. So I don't feel like you're grounded. So you can do this anytime. This is what I do. The first thing I do is when I put my feet on the floor, first time when I put my feet on the floor, when I wake up, and then you, you, this is what you say. I imagine the soles of my feet, excuse me, I imagine the soles of my feet being one with the earth, like roots of a tree growing deep into the earth for strength and stability. You don't have to memorize that. Just imagine that your feet are roots, tree, deep into the earth, strength and stability, however you want to imagine it. You're hooking into her. You aren't, you don't get as floaty as flighty and you won't start going like this. If you ground yourself every morning when you put your feet on the floor, you will probably start advancing and the things will come to you greater and faster. So she, and she's, she keeps calling you honey. Did she call you honey? Yeah, yeah, she called me a lot of things. She called me honey and sugar. There you go. So she's, she's right there. So that is the secret handshake. I usually don't get the names, the, the cute names, but she's talking to you. So she wants you to just keep focusing as best as you can, be as uplifted as possible and as positive, and don't let yourself down. So that would mean you're putting yourself down. So if you put yourself down, you're really letting yourself down. So she wants you to, to go for it. Be the best that you could be. Don't blame yourself. 
And also, there's another spiritual piece here, is there are no mistakes and nothing's broken. So if you do stray, that's not a fail. If we do stray, or if something gets broken, we don't go, oh shoot, I messed up. It's, what can I learn from it? If you blame, if you have regret, shame, embarrassment, all those are lower vibrations. So if instead, you kind of, like I'm not gonna go there, and instead you just go, well, what can I learn from this? That's why we're here. So that's what she would like for you to do. No more of this on yourself. Okay, what can I learn from that? Do you love gardening? Do you love the earth? Do you love plants and flowers? Horticulture? You're here to tend to the, the flowers, the plants, the trees. You're an arborist, that's the tree person. You could name them, I don't know if you can now, but you are here to tend to the earth. You are a, you are a gardener, a tree person, a plant person, soil, um, the air, the water, purification, your conservation, you are earth, you are all of that. That's why you're here. No, that's it. <laughs> There's always more. <laughs> so, good luck. So, that's why I was laughing, because my friend is sitting right behind her, and that's totally her. So, <laughs> so cool. <laughs> What is your name? Paxton. Hi. Hi. So I kind of want to know like why I'm here, but I also like to hear from my mom. What's your mom's name? Noreen. Just gonna say because I don't know what this means. Sometimes I get metaphor. I have to keep going in because there's symbolism all the time. So she says, stop, stop shouting because you need to listen. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna find out what that means. She's trying to get through to you. Do you wanna connect with her? She's trying to get in, but I think you're very busy. Are you totally social? You're so way social that she's trying to get in on your social calendar. It's the best, now mind you, there's a lot of levity. She's a, she's a very warm soul. I feel a lot of warmth. Do your, does your right or left hand ever tingle or sweat? One of them. They both sweat. Is it a lot or certain times? Uh-huh, she's holding your hand. It's the greatest. Do you talk to her? Okay, good, because we've got that going. But um, She's reveling in how busy you are. Every now and then, I think what this is, it's not about that she can't get through to you because she is. It's every now and then take time for yourself. You're doing a lot, you're tending to a lot of people, you're listening to a lot of people's stories, but every now and then just stop the fireworks enough and go off on your own. Be by yourself. She'll way get through to you when you're alone. I mean, she'll get through to you at any time. But do something for yourself, because there are a lot of people I feel that are pulling on you, and you're a love bug, and that's great, but you haven't been doing enough for yourself. So she's gonna come through stronger when you're at peace in a more meditative, quiet state. And you need that anyway, you need to re-energize, because I feel like you're, you're like the counselor, and that's your, that's your job. So that's a segue, let's just see if there's any more. She said her death was not in vain. She was asked to leave. There were other souls that needed her attention. She was called to leave. This is a high service when you are asked by the ones on high to go sooner than old age. She didn't like the fact, but she's a very knowledgeable, wise spirit. She knows what she's doing. 
She took care of you, she knew exactly how to do it, and then she had to go. I believe she's an angel. I believe she's an in she was an incarnated angel in this lifetime. I see giant billowing wings. And I should have had should have told people, should have told people to get tissues. If anyone has any tissues, please pass them down, folks. Should have brought my tissues. So she is of the angelic realm. She came into a human body to be your mother. She had another job to do and she left. And that's the way they work. They're of service. High service. She's watching you. She talks to you. She's a great, knowledgeable being. Um, she doesn't want you to feel that she let you down. She was of service. She's um, tremendous. Um, when you pass, she will take you in with a big scoop. It's going to be an absolute unbelievable scoop. The two of you are friends, and you've been doing this a lot. You go back and forth as who's going to be of service, and you've played her mom. You've done that a few times also. So it's very fun. You go back and forth as to who, who's going to tend to who. You're the cheering section. That's your job. You're a pep person. You're cheering. And that um, I don't know whether this will be in a company where you would do HR. I don't know if this is event planning, party planning, um, whether you are going to be even doing something where there are kids involved who have learning disabilities and you're going to possibly be tempering them and keeping them corralled because it might be like a circus and they might be out of control. And you're going to find a way to actually bring them in where they can be focusing but they will be having incredible enjoyment in a more controlled way, which is a little different from party planning, if you heard they're two completely different things. But in the end, for these learning disabled or special, special ed kids, or whatever this is, it could be camp counselor or organizing events somewhere. You're corralling people in that have a difficult time focusing, and then they're more concentrated. And for them, because of you, because of your ability, they're gonna be in heaven. So keep doing what you're doing. Stay positive. This is often a big thing. A lot of people have negative self-talk. It's kind of like a human thing that we do. Just think positively and watch the miracles happen. And enjoy. Thank you. You're welcome. You're Adam. Yes. I heard the name. Hi. What can I do for you? So last year I had a friend tragically taken from us and we'd have no answers and I was wondering if you could connect with me. What is his name? Um, her name is Sarah. Her, Sarah. Do you want to know how? Yeah. Was she in a room with someone? and she was found? Um, and was there a head trauma? She was, all we know is that she was strangled. We don't know where she is, we haven't found her yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was this here? No. Where? Um, Neptune's in Delashore. It feels to me that she was hit. Because I see brain. Um, if there's strangled, that's asphyxiation, so that's the brain. But I get a bang to the head. But that could have been when she fell. But I get the head trauma, I think, is pretty intense. Um, I don't believe she's with us. I think she might have known this person. I think it's known. I think the body is hidden, but it could have been dumped. It could have been put in the ocean. It could have been some type of a strange dumping in the water, like a weighting of the body. And this is where, in terms of doom and gloom, I mean, this isn't really low stuff in terms of scare stuff. This is answers. And my right ear is ringing. So if your ears ever ring, those are the angels and guides. So that's truth. And people have questions, and this is, they. This is, these are answers. Um, you wanna know how she is? Mm -hmm. She's okay. 
So she has a lot of memories. There are a lot of things that go through her mind, if we're called on the other side. She reminisces. There's a lot of reminiscing. She's very pleased. She felt very good. This life was okay. This was an okay experience. I feel that she was duped. There was a trick that was put on her by this person. And um, it could be money related, maybe sexual, but it feels more money related. Um, I want to see if it's karma between the two. It was not karmic. And does anyone have tissues? Yeah, I just, we're on it. Good, we need tissues here. She's known you so many times. Do you know that? There are 10 lifetimes where the two of you have been like this. There are about 100 lifetimes where you've known her. She is with you. Thank you. Thank you. She talks to you. You can feel her. Do you know she's there? Do you feel her presence? You can just ask for her to come around and just hold you. And she's there. She hasn't left you. Um, she works, her issue is, it's a little bit of naivete, that's her soul stuff that she's working on, and getting pulled into things that aren't necessarily for her highest good, that's what she works on, but it's interesting, she doesn't have any regret. When you go to the other side, there's peace and joy and love and all that stuff, it doesn't mean your issues are gone and wiped away, but she's fine. As she said, my soul lives on. She's in your heart. She's never left. You're going to see her again. Okay. Now, do you have a pet? Uh, is it a dog? Yeah. So, I'm just going to say this, but if it's this type of dog, I'm going to like flip out. But I'm, uh, I, is it a poodle? social worker anymore. What? what? Like, it's like crazy. Uh, she works through your poodle. She friggin' is talking to you through your poodle. Oh my god, oh my god. Holy crumb. See, I said crumb. I can't say that on the word here. Wow. Oh my god, is that good. Okay, so we got that going, but also when you ultimately pass, then she's there. And then you're just... Literally, it's picking up where you left off. Like, it's not even like, uh, I mean, when you go back home and you pass, there's like re-entry. So it's not like all of a sudden you're just like, you know, it's like, this is cool. I mean, you go, go through a little bit of like, really? There's a little bit of that, like, oh, I'm not down there anymore. But, but after that, you just, you find each other and you just like go off into the sunset and it's done. So she's fine. I don't see any karma between the two of you. There's even a thing with her regarding the justice about it. You know, sometimes we might wonder if someone's been murdered, like how they feel on the other side. If they feel like, ah, I gotta get that guy, I gotta get that, you know, like, gotta get him. She feels justice is served. So whoever did this is already paying for it. I don't know what they're going through, but this soul is not having an easy time. And I don't think that this is just guilt that's racking them. I think that something's going on with the one that killed her and that no. So that is the universe. The universe balances. So what you put out, the good that you put out, you get it back. The negative you put out, it comes back. And that's just the way that the universe works in balancing energy. So she's fine with it. She's fine. You treat yourself to something. She wants you to treat yourself to something. I don't know what it is. You're going to know what it is. And it could be something that she knew that would be like, I don't just make it up, like ice cream or something, like whatever the two of you had where you'd be like, oh, I gotta have a brew, I gotta do it. You do that, and then she'll, she'll look good. And may you heal. You're Just in case. 
Yeah. 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 And your name's Bianca. 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 Yep. Are you a bio person? Bio and statistics, organization and patterning. Does any of that make sense? Okay. There's a trending, there's statistics, I see, I see charts, I see, I see signs, but there's something with biology. I don't know, this, I see all of this, the rhythms, I see. But also, would you go into psychology or psychiatry? Yes. Yeah, you wanna know how the brain is working. You'd have fun with mine. <laughs> I'd be curious. You, 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 are you doing pre-med? Would you become a psychiatrist? Can you put that up just I was thinking, thinking like neuropsychology. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So somewhere along those lines. Yep. Brain patterning. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Brain, bio, frequency, the signs, mm -hmm. the waves. Uh huh. Yep. That's your thing. You were a doctor. You had another lifetime mm -hmm. where you did that. You lived a very long life. You worked, you were otolaryngeal. You did the, the ears, nose, throat. You were very big into tonsils. That was your thing. <laughs> you, and it's very interesting. Are you freaking looking into people's mouths? I don't even know. Or do you like people who have good teeth? <laughs> I just see you like looking over into people's like throats. <laughs> people and I get curious. Uh -huh. So I look at them for a while. Um, I wouldn't say teeth exactly. So it's looking into them. Looking into them, I looking get very curious. Yeah. <laughs> so that's interesting because I got, because you see, I see, um, it's called clairvoyance. So it's like with my mind's eye, I see the, the vision here. So I see another picture. So I see you looking over and in. So you're seeing into their head. And see, you're, you're looking in. So you gave me the, the, more, the perception and the mind. And I was getting, I was just getting real concrete about it. What about regarding the spiritual path? About where you'd go? Mm -hmm. Do you ever do palm? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Palm reading. Oh. And that was a yes. <laughs> Keep doing it. Were you taught or do you know? No, I just I get very curious when I look at my palms and I try to look at other people's palms. Yeah, you could you could either Go for it, ask for assistance from the highest of Christ-like consciousness. Mm -hmm. Just ask for the highest to come in, download you with information, and then you start looking at the palms, and then you're gonna start understanding patterns, but if you really wanna go for it, read books, go do online, um, whether it's YouTube or articles, and then there'll be maps. Life, I don't know much. I, I don't. I didn't do. I didn't do palm in this lifetime. I know I've done it elsewhere. But I know there's a lifeline, death line, how many kids, and all that stuff. But there are lines that tell a story. So you you could be you could teach yourself. You don't need a course. It's very natural to you. You've done it before. So what's the possibility of reaching liberation in this lifetime? Liberation. Yeah. Now, what do you mean by liberation? Like enlightenment, for example. Like you're this. already you're already on that way. You hold yourself back. You question things. So the questioning is where you block yourself. It's not questioning and wanting more, because it's good to ask questions. That's the way we grow. It's that you're you're doubting it. You're questioning it and you're doubting things. Consider that everything is divinely ordered and there's nothing broken, and watch things unfold. And let things be where they are and don't try and change them or fix them. When you allow something to be and then you step back and then you put your hands behind your back and you close your mouth, watch the way things unfold and then someone else might come in and then something miraculous happens where there's a change of events that you didn't expect all without you're not doing anything. And that, just like when you see that, uh, those pictures of the flower that blossoms, you just watch how it knows exactly what to do and then the roots and tendrils and this and that. 
that's miraculous and you need a little bit more of that and that will help you grow. And good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. And what is your name? Mohammed. Hi. What Hi. can I do for you? Um, I just wanted to ask the same question. What's my purpose? Why are you here? Yeah. You like sports? Yeah, a bit. Do you do statistics? Yeah, I did. And I'm not good at it. <laughs> I see you with graphs and charts, but I don't know, were you a finance guy? Yeah, I think so sometimes, but... Uh-huh. Um, have you taken econ? Yeah, Did you like it? Yeah, I think econ is going to be my major, I guess, but... Yeah. yeah. Um, um, hang on. It's like you, you like trending, you like, you like seeing, do you like seeing patterns? Do you like seeing graphs or do you want to know why they happen? I want to know why they happen. Yeah. Do you have a good advisor? Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know if this is, I don't, I know if they have this in this school, there's something called financial engineering. And they, they're, they're computer programs, they're software programs that the finance guys and the econ people do. And they help, they're like the back end for the traders and the hedge fund people. I don't know if that's your thing. <coughs> but I definitely see you as an econ person, but I see finance in there. Are you, have you taken a finance class or do they offer that here? Uh, they do offer finance. Yeah, I'm taking one. Uh, the thing is, yes, I, I always wanted to be a hedge fund manager. <laughs> and he always wanted to be a hedge fund manager. Holy oh, Moses. <laughs> I loved it! <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so, but what's interesting is, and I don't know if that it's because it's a Friday night and you're a little tired, or if this is your personnel, <coughs> or are you doubting because you're very laid back like I was the therapist too so I pick up on all the as you get curious about people so is it that you're wondering whether this is in fact it or you're just tired or you're a laid back person or you think this could be it no oh, I'm just tired you're tired <laughs> see because <laughs> you who knows right and you're allowed to be tired so go with your gut they always say, this is the spiritual gurus and stuff, go with your passion, where you make your mark, where you make your money, when you're in the vortex or in your center is when you're doing the things you love the most. One more thing. Uh, yeah. You know, I've always also wanted to have the power, you know, to influence people, other people's lives. So do you think that I'll ever have that? In a good way, obviously. In time, in time, you get yourself in check first. Do you eat well? Yeah, I do. Okay. Keep with the clean food. Your body needs that clean food. You can't do garbage. Your body, I don't know what other lifetimes you, you ate crap. And you couldn't do that. You can't, you have to eat well. Balanced, healthy, like phytonutrient stuff. You need the greens, you need the fruits, the <laughs> vibrant juices from the, ju from the vegetables and the fruits. Has, you have to have that mixed in with your stuff. You work on yourself first. You solidify who you are. You, you maintain your clarity stay in balance surround yourself by good people think positively get your house in order and then it starts but it's slow it's a process it's not going to happen overnight it grows you build momentum but you're going to see it you're going to get more confident as you just start creating your story it's a really good story that you have a really fun story and i see you getting out there i see you making money i see you having friends I see a partner, I see that you land a really good job, and that you're out there and you want some notoriety, you want people to know who you are, but it's not going to be an overnight sensation, it's in time, and you're going to love it, 
Don't be so hard on yourself. Don't rush yourself. Uh, be very patient. And um, in time, I see you achieving. Like, the only thing is, you don't do well with pets. Right. No. You see? Yeah. That's the only thing is, I don't see you with a pet. Like, if that's the worst of our problems, please. <laughs> God, everyone would want that reading. Okay, so so whatever, whatever. That's it. I think the dog hair thing. I don't know.